Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. We're going free diving inside that amazing cave. Inside that. Let's go see what's in there. I haven't come down here since I was a kid, but I was doing a little archaeology in the area, working with a wonderful Native American woman, and uh, we got talking about just how amazing this place is. And I just decided, you know, I can't, can't quite go back to civilization without showing you. It's one of the reasons I love this state so much, our natural beauty. The rock is very, very slick. It's got a lot of algae on it. Since I had to put the GoPro in the underwater housing in order to keep it waterproof, uh, it kind of kills the audio, so I'm just going to voice over what's going on. Um, I love GoPros, but I will say they don't do very well in low light, so what you guys get to see here is awesome, but a small fraction of all the cool stuff I got to see. So this is uh, some kind of a sucker fish that I think is actually adapted to the low light of the cave environment. And here you get to see, I think it's a sunfish, which oddly enough is in the complete pitch black of the cave. And here I am finally making it to the opposite end of the cave. <laughs> and of course, taking a shower. <laughs> you, you gotta have fun, right? If you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. So, yeah, you can see inside here, there, <laughs> there are just amazing formations absolutely everywhere stalactites, speleotherms, whatever you want to call them. Like, this cave is fantastic. And it was a real pleasure to get to spend some time in here. So, after putting around, diving for a little bit, I uh, finally swam back through the cave to the, uh, to the entrance. I mean, honestly, the cave is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And it's gotta be in my top three most beautiful caves I've ever been in. And it's the only one I've ever got to go diving in. I wanna say something. That says Nicholas. Nicholas, not cool. This place took hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions of years to form. And it only takes one idiot to come down here and deface it. These are shared places. You need to respect them. Super cool. Not cool. Take out more than you bring in. I'm taking this. Well, if you like this video, give us a no way. Nah, can't be. Check this out. This is a member of the mint family, which you can tell because it's got a square stem. This is called lemon balm. Lemon balm is a type of mint. It tastes kind of lemony and uh, I'm gonna bring some home and we're gonna make something delicious with it. 
I mean, it wouldn't be Catch and Cook California if we didn't do a little foraging or something, right? I didn't see any fish I could catch in there. Lots of fish, but none I could catch. I'm gonna go uh, upstream here, see if there's anything else we can find. But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna grab some of this lemon balm. So when I was a kid, we used to come down here and go swim around in the cave. And I remember afterwards, we would just bounce around and look in these pools in this just gorgeous creek. And we would always find crawdads, and a whole lot of them. So I'm gonna look around, see if we can find some crawdads, do a little catch and cook. If we can't, don't worry, I've already spotted some delicious wild edibles. We're gonna pick some wild edible greens, some wild edible herbs, and then, uh, well, you know, we'll do some, uh, something else, another kind of catch and cook. Let me know what you guys think. Is it boring if we don't catch a fish? Or you guys enjoy coming along on these adventures regardless? Well, let's talk some plants then, huh? So, let's see. This one right here, this is willow. Everybody knows this, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you anyway. You can chew the bark. The bark has salicylic acid in it, which is what they synthesized to make aspirin. So if you chew it, it's kind of bitter, but it'll take away your headache. This is a Oregon ash. Um, its leaves will always grow. Hang on, let me point it out to you. Its leaves will always grow in fives or sevens. Always odd number. Um, they usually the Oregon ash has a more rounded leaf than the European ashes, which have a longer, slender, more willow-like leaf, but kind of serrated. And Oregon ash is a white wood, but it's a hardwood, and it makes a very quick um, bow, bow and arrow. There's this misconception you can only use yew wood to make bows. Um, I've been making bows since I was 17 years old, I think, and I've been hunting with them since I was 18, 19. And I've never made a bow out of you. So there's plenty of alternatives. If you guys want to see a, a video where we make bows and arrows, let us know. Leave a comment. We'll be happy to show you how to do that. Martin is an expert bow maker, by the way. Here's a beautiful root burl of a willow. You can see, again, these long, slender leaves. So that's what a mature willow looks like. This right here, that, hang on, there you go. That is wild grape. So this will have edible fruit. You can see these vines. And actually, let's zoom in. See that? That's a cluster of wild grapes right there. These guys are not quite mature yet, but they will be soon. Wild grapes are edible. They do have seeds. Tastes kind of like a Concord grape. So your classic grape juice, that like really purple, dark, rich grape flavor. That's what they taste like when they're mature. They're really good. One of my favorites seasonally is uh, Wild Grape Jelly Donuts. So if you want to see us make that, leave a comment, let us know. Might start making some more sweets on this channel as well. Catch and cook and dessert. Does that sound good? I hope so. I love dessert. Wild Grape. I'm not even going to tell you what I'm going to do with this. We're going to do something with this. I'm not going to gather it today. Diane and I are going to gather it down at the creek near our place um, in the next couple of weeks and we'll do something amazing with it. You're gonna dig it. Check this out. So I'm gonna gather up some of this and maybe we'll keep it simple today. I found like a hundred crawdads up there but they were all about this big. Let's just make a uh, wild mint mojito. How's that sound? I can't walk through the woods and not find something to eat, right? So I'm gonna talk about a medicinal plant, an edible plant, and a deadly plant here in a second. This one is wild plantain. It's got these long ribbed leaves. Comes in a lot of different variants. This is the, the, the wider leafed variety. Some of them will be long and skinny. And then the flowering head on those will be much smaller, about that size. Wild plantain is awesome for cuts. So if you get cut out here, and it's really gushing, crush some of this up and put it on there. It's an antiseptic and it'll help close it up, keep it disinfected. Good thing to know in the woods. This one here, this one here is watercress. You can see real close, 
Can you focus? It's in the mustard family and it tastes very peppery. You can see it's got this classic four petal white flower. You can eat the whole thing just like this. Just kidding. Whoa. That is potently spicy though. Whew. God, that is spicy. It's like chewing on a radish. Whew. I feel like that'll clear out your sinuses or something. Man. But super good. I've been looking for it for a while. So I'm gonna gather up some of that and then see what we can do with it. And then this guy right here, that is deadly poisonous oleander. I was just talking to a guy who was coming down to the cave and he said that it's so potently poisonous he's heard stories where people would break off a stick and use it to stir their coffee and then they'd die. Take note of this plant here and don't use that to make your skewers for your kebabs or anything like that. No roasting marshmallows with oleander. So that is a invasive eastern fox squirrel, and that's called barking. He is currently scolding us. He's really mad that we just came here and disturbed the fact that he's eating black walnuts. You're not even supposed to live here, buddy. Yeah, well, I'll talk to you any way I wish. Yeah, no, you're not supposed to be here. Gray squirrels are supposed to be here. Yeah, you're eating their food. All right, well, you're still really cute, so you want to see him up close? That's what we're looking for, the very last of the Himalaya blackberries. Remember that five, there you go, five leaf arrangement, rounded leaf with that pointed tip, serrated edges. It'll have a line of thorns going down the middle of the leaf. And then it has thorns, big thorns, going down all of the vines. That's how you can tell the difference between that and the native blackberry, which has more of a triangular leaf and much, much finer thorns, needle-like thorns, and usually smaller berries as well. This out. I would tilt it more, but I'm really afraid it's gonna slide off. Ooh, it almost slid off. But yeah, we got a little bit of this uh, watercress. We just kind of threw in here for a little spice. I've never had wild watercress. No wonder you put so little. Mm. It was really spicy. <laughs> Bruschetta always reminds me of being a kid. My mom used to make me watch the um, the little rounds of bread 
because she'd be off in the kitchen doing other things and otherwise they'd burn, so that was my job. Watch them, make sure that they were perfectly toasted. We're gonna finish these, but boom, we got this too. I wanted to say, I forgot to, to mention, not all wild mint is edible. There's uh, mint like coyote mint, penny royal, they're in the, the mint family and they can be used medicinally, but if you overuse them, they can cause things like miscarriages. So you gotta be 100% positive on your identification as always. This is 100% wild mint, which is not a native, but it is um, an introduced true mint. And at the very end, I didn't film this, but I just threw a bunch of this lemon balm in here as well. Crushed up a couple leaves and dropped those in there so that it should have a little bit more of that lemon balm infusion in there as well. With the blackberry at the bottom, and then your mint infusion at the top. I'll give it a shot. The soda water. Club tonic? Whatever. Club soda? Well, that's, that's the good part. <laughs> I like the carbonation. <laughs> it's just but it tastes great. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it tastes really good. He's like mojito. Is, it a, is this a mojito? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it tastes like a mojito right here. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly like it should then. <laughs> so wild mint, there you go. <laughs> oh man. It's delicious. It's totally good, right? Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did so, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and until next time, keep the old ways alive. Here's your outtakes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that either. By the way, it's not advised to go swimming in cargo pants. I think you should do this one in one bite. In one bite? One bite. <laughs> Stuff it in. <laughs> 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 That's not, don't do it that way.